These are the tales and ramblings of two men, of their dream of running a successful food truck business and life. We invite you along to join Josh and Skippy on this journey. This is Monday Morning Food Truck. Powered by Riverside. Hard stop there. Good morning. Good morning, Josh. What's wrong? What's wrong? What was funny? Why are you laughing? Uh, because for some reason I saw the media board. <laughs> so I saw everything that you were doing. <laughs> you can see that. That's weird. It's all oh, good. Well, I'm doing whatever. great. I'm doing excellent. My I, I slept a little wrong. My neck's a little stiff. But other than that, it's a beautiful day. <laughs> Not so it's beautiful on your side of the state. <laughs> you are three hours away. Yeah, um, we have heavy rain this morning. Well, we we plan. It's fifty five percent chance max uh, this afternoon. Oh yeah. no, it's uh no, we have heavy rain this morning. <laughs> good, good. Which is good. It's, today we're closed, so it's a good day to have it. It's definitely. Great I wish day. it was going to be that way the rest of the week. But yeah, we had rain again this weekend. It looks like so. I see Friday. Yes. That's good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. By the way, good. by the way, yellow is the super fast thermopen. Just so you know, it's the fastest of the colors. Absolutely, that makes perfect sense. Okay, just making sure we understand that. I uh, I need to grab my phone real quick. Your uh, camera is blinking in and out. By the way, it is. Well, it did for a second. You're good now. I don't. You did hit it or something. Wow. <laughs> Hello. Okay. Anyway, we are off to a great start. No blinking. Hopefully the audio is good uh, this morning. Um, it appears that we've scared everybody away from uh, last week's freaking debacle. Um, it was beautiful. Yeah, it was, uh, the, the upload uh, was terrible, um, both video and audio, apparently. Uh, <laughs> With the upload, it was a lot of us. There was like a delay, mm. so the the audio didn't sync correctly when it uploaded, or when it downloaded, or whatever. Um, so for the second second half of the show, they could hear us both, but we were both talking at the same time most of the time. So freaking AI. This will work better. Uh, I made sure that I went through and did a. Oh my god, Sorry, a, I know I'm pausing. <laughs> Causing major issues. You got a booger. Do I? <laughs> um, I made sure I did a full reboot after I get everything uh, kind of plugged in, and uh, we should be working better. I see the audio off for me is looking better. Um, hopefully that is the case. So, uh, in my closet. any awesome. comments, any any comments, uh, please let us know. Um, Skippy said my camera is going in and out a little bit, but I think we are good now. So um, it just blinked. Yeah, I'm, I'm. I don't know what that means. I don't know. Like it. Like yeah. Like maybe it's, it's almost you. like an. Eye, it's almost like an eye blink. <laughs> yeah, maybe it's you because I'm looking at the other live Green? streams and there's okay. nothing there. Maybe it's so, me. Like wouldn't be the first time. Um, Let's. Yeah, I'm gonna go. go. I need to go try to find my phone. Oh boy. I was in a hurry to get everything done and ready for the show, and then I. I put it down somewhere. Well, let's let's talk while Josh was gone. Let's what let's are you talk, talk about. Uh, we're going to talk about while you're gone. So go ahead and go do your stuff, and oh my we'll, god, we'll just we'll just talk about Josh and oh, it's all about him. Um, yes, uh, like he said, we do apologize for the debacle of last week uh, when you run a food truck six days a week. Monday is pretty much the only day you can do stuff. So um, again, we definitely. We definitely appreciate uh, you guys sticking with us, um, all our tens of tens listeners. Um, what do you? Uh, we're going to put a poll on the Facebook, but uh, if you want to chime in, either on the apps or on uh, on on YouTube. Um, thank you for everybody, by the way, uh, subscribing it. 
uh, I'd like to know what you'd like to hear us talk about. Um, sometimes for us, it just, it's a, sometimes we just don't know. So we could definitely use some help on, uh, on what to, Whew. he's Follow such a trailer. Oh, Hey Josh, how you doing? Hi. Hi. You good now? Yeah. <laughs> I feel whole again. <laughs> you were naked for 30 seconds. I got, I got my buddy back. Oh boy. Okay. Um, what, what, what'd you say about 10? We got 10 people listening. Yeah, our tens of tens listeners. Um, Fran says she's happy to be part, part of the ten. So on YouTube, I I said thank you, and then um, for for sticking with us and uh, em uh, emphasized uh, the debacle, and um, asked them to uh, post on Facebook, YouTube, uh, wherever it may, wherever they're frequenting us, on what they'd like to hear us talk about next after our topic today. Yeah. Yeah. That's all. We're all What's done, folks. Today? <laughs> Weren't we finishing the POS oh. discussion? Or are we kind of I don't done? know that we're gonna finish anything, but yes. Part two. POS. Yeah. Uh -huh. But first Oh, you sound like the, you sound like Julie Chen Moonbez off Big Brother. Hashtag but first. Oh, okay. For people watching, I don't know what you're talking about. What I'm talking about. That's, that's awful. Uh, mm -hmm. How much product do you buy for a week's worth of vending? Oh, don't worry. We're going to get into some of that this today. Oh, I like that um, question. Good question. Good question. Uh, that was from, from mom. Um, Skippy, you actually worked this week, I think. Wow. You 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 went there, huh? You, Did you, you work last week? Uh. I actually worked this week. Yes, absolutely. Okay, see, there we go. Um, how was your week, Skippy? Uh, Millions it, of sales. It was definitely a week. Uh, it was okay. Um, let's see what I got. Uh, we did a little roadside event in Charlotte. Uh, that uh -huh. uh, sucked uh, bad. Did like one hundred and eighty dollars for lunch, and I decided to leave. <laughs> so I left and went to Home Depot. Did another seven hundred dollars for dinner and. Called it a day. <laughs> yeah, was quite was quite happy about the the strong finish. Um, Wednesday we did another event with the University of uh, Michigan. Uh, Go green! And they uh, so the last time I did an event with them, they they had me set up as a vendor, so I can just send them an invoice and they can do an EF or an ETF mm -hmm. into my account. Um. Because that was such a debacle and I didn't get paid for two weeks, I asked the nice lady if they were doing the same thing or if they were paying with their uh, university-issued uh, credit card, called it P-Card. Mm -hmm. And she assured me, yes, we will be paying with uh, with P-Card. I'm like, oh, well, that's great. Because the last three times that's happened, they've always tipped like 15 18%. Yeah. Maybe they're not tipping anymore. Maybe they're maybe they're not tipping anymore. Uh, so yeah. otherwise, it was a, it was a, a good good lunch, about twenty five hundred bucks. Uh, we, uh, Shane Johnstone. Yes, is in. Good morning, he's, boys. Looking, he's looking for a place to buy a, a full pan because they don't have Sam's Clubs in <laughs> Canada. <laughs> he's what? He's in Canada. Yeah, and? He, mess he messaged me about this the size of pan I use for a mac and cheese. <laughs> Mike. A full size pan that you'd buy at Sam's. Yeah, we don't have one of those. <laughs> uh, Shane, I use I use half pans, so not fulls. Mine's better. Um, okay. I find that it, my mac and cheese, if it's a slower period of time, won't dry out as much because I have so much out on the table. So having half pans will expose less air to the mac and cheese over time. Uh, and he's very like true. He's very true on that. I, I I might mix it in a full pan just for the extra room, uh, but I pour it into a six-inch deep uh, third pan with a liner. Wow. What are you doing? Yeah, are we getting the ASMR? <laughs> what does that ASMR stuff. stand for? Uh, audio. Okay. That's as far as I got. 
All right. Well, since you brought it up, squirrel moment. I find myself watching the videos of the guy throwing or rolling stuff down a stair or down a concrete stairwell. The stuff that ex- it explodes. Yeah. Yeah. To I, see, yeah. How, see how the glass would explode. Yeah. Anyway. Autonomous sensory meridian response is a tingling sensation that usually begins on the scalp and moves down the back of the neck and upper spine. A pleasant form of para- paresthesia? Paresthesia. Paresthesia. Not the tumor. Get to the top of it. If not the tumor. <laughs> Who is your daddy and what does he do? Sorry. Anyway, back to... <laughs> Back to my eventful week. Yeah, I'm sorry. Because uh, we worked five days straight. I was pretty proud. Holy crap. I know. Uh, A new record. Uh, 18 is actually the record, by the way. 18 days straight. Not this um, year. Last year. Uh, so the 25th, which was a great Thursday, we were invited to uh, serve roadside at a car dealership, at, a, at, uh, at an Adrian uh, Dodge dealership. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. didn't know what to expect uh, so I cooked a, we'll call it a medium amount of food um, like three and two and a couple pans of mac thank you I was going to ask you to uh, emphasize what a medium amount so people yeah can, um, and I, I had about nine people deep in line because it was just me that's fine they were only ordered you know single or double items but mm-hmm. the fire department shows up and, for food. Uh, what's that? For food. Well, one they were of hungry. Them, one of them bought okay. something. <laughs> Just before they shut you down. <laughs> no. So he comes in. He's like, hey, I got to get in your rig. I'm like, all right, well, grab a set of gloves. I'll put you to work. <laughs> Sounds kind of personal. So he, he takes his time, walks out. Now I have a, the generator platform is up front, just like yours is. And my generator mm-hmm. is on that platform. My exhaust yep. is on my dry, or driver's side. Okay. Well, so first thing he says when he walks in was, uh, your generator is too close to your door. He's like, according to national fire code. So you have a side door too, right? You have two doors. I only have a side door. Oh, okay. I mean, I can get out the porch, but just as easy. But anyway, um, it's according to National Fire Code, because I guess that's what they all doing nowadays. They uh, said that it needs to be twelve feet away from an ingress or egress. I'm like, well, I got tons of fans that are going to blow anything out, and I got a carbon monoxide detector. Should I be okay? He's like, yeah, probably. He's like, I'm not going to so, dig you for it. I'll give you your sticker. I guess that's maybe something I, we should have talked about when you were getting your trailer designed, because for mine. When I was going through all my, when we first started having to have fire inspections, it was, we needed to have two points of egress. So that way, if the smoker was in an inferno, mm-hmm. we had another way of getting out of the trailer. Sure. Um, so we were supposed to have two doors. We didn't. We only had the one. Mm. Um, so what we did was we cut out our big non-sliding service window. So yes. the window in between the two. And then uh, switched it out with a piece of plexiglass and some Velcro. And a couple of handles, so that way we can pull that out if we have to, and use it as a second egress. Yes. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm assuming that they make a window that, that is an option. Uh, I can tell you that I can. I mean, if my well, door, I could have gotten out of my service windows if I needed to. Yeah. If <laughs> if my door is not available, mm-hmm. and my smoker's on fire, and I can't get out either way. I'm going through my service window because it does open from either side. It's, yeah. it's a it's a horizontal slider not a vertical slider yeah so, I, I i told the fire inspector i said don't worry i'm not dying inside of this trailer yeah it's not gonna happen i will i've spent will, enough time in it i'm not dying in here i will figure I out, will get out yeah i will get out i promise i'll hide in the warmer it's steel and insulated we're good <laughs> <laughs> anyway uh, continue <laughs> might be a continue. little warm in there but you know a little warm yeah not as warm as it is outside of the... Uh, so we anyway. stayed there until about 6. We had about uh, 40, 40 tickets. Um, I wish they... I, I didn't know what to expect, so I wish they would have told me, and maybe I got to start asking, 
will your employees be eating? Because the majority of the first wave was just their employees. Yep. And it was like 30 employees, which is great. I appreciate it. And then one of the late, I told the lady I had like two rack of ribs left and one guy was standing there. He's like, I'll take one. I'll come back and pick it up later. I'm like, okay. First, and the other lady's like, yeah, I'll do the same thing. It's so great. Blah, blah, blah. And of course I didn't sell them. I actually <laughs> take money for that. So the one guy came up and bought some, but the other guy, uh, the, the gal was like, oh, my, uh, my husband is cooking right now. I'm like, sure he is. So I closed down with an extra rack of ribs that I'd already cut up and boxed for. Her. <laughs> anyway, um, Friday we were supposed to do a, a roadside event with uh, with the Callahan's uh, with our coffee shop. We we're supposed to serve inside our last time, and he had mentioned that he was going to uh, book a band, and so I reached out to him because I hadn't heard or seen a post. Uh, I said, hey, did you book a band? He's like, nope, couldn't find one. I said, fine, do you mind if I park in the parking lot instead of coming inside? Because, well, frankly, it's just easier. And he's like, yeah, sure. Yeah, we probably had one of our better days. I think we did like 1200 bucks in four hours. That was a good day. Nice. Uh, and then Saturday was just a roadside down the street. Did about 900 bucks. Windy as all get out. Um. Still have yet to put the awning out for service. It's probably a good thing. Because every time it rains, it's windy as hell. Yeah. Um, but yeah, other than that, I'm going to say it's a good week. Fair week. Excellent. A fair week? Fair you week. had a fair last week? Oh, I hate this shit. Hate it back. It works for me. No, when you log into Square and it doesn't recognize you for some reason because it's, you know, the only computer you've ever logged into Square on. <laughs> uh, my, it has a time limit on it now. Yeah, it's um, like 20 days or something. It's, yeah, it's a while. It always throws me off, though, when I, it happens. It's like, what the fuck? Um, uh, so for the, for the week, uh, we ended up with... And are, are you doing Sunday to Saturday? Or yeah. Tuesday yeah, to normal Sunday? week is how we, yeah, that's how okay. we report. Yeah. So Sunday to Saturday. Oh, here we go. Sunday. I'm going to do Sunday to Sunday, actually, because. Just you want an extra day in there to make it look better? Well, it doesn't really make it look any better. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we ended up with about 7,900. Yeah. 130 transactions, which is up 300%. Nice. <laughs> oh, over the prior week. <laughs> which is good, because I didn't work the prior week. <laughs> I would hope you'd be up. If you were down over the previous week. And what I don't understand is, how was I up alarming. only 66% in sales over the prior week? <laughs> Um, anyway, yeah, so it was a good time. It was, it was, so it was it'll take the same time frame. So if you do an eight day period, Skippy, it'll take the previous eight days usually. Yeah, I know. So it'll match the number of days typically. Yeah, I get it. Okay. I'm just letting you know. I'm, just, I'm sorry. Jeez. Don't get mad at me. I'm just trying to help you understand how Square does shit. And for the first time, after I said how much I love Square and I don't want to switch ever. I had a moment where I was going to start seriously getting quotes from other uh, services this oh, week. Oh, so you're saying you had an eventful week? I had, I had a, a small, I made a mistake, I tried to fix it, and Square is going to fuck me. <laughs> okay then, well, let's talk about your uh, um, boudoir let's... week. I, we we had a good week. We um, let's see. Let me, let me pull my shit up. Um, sales trends because I like that one. I'm 
one second. I'm going to hold music while I'm searching. Um, search for? We, we, yeah, we had a pretty good week. Um, I had another um, post snafu. Um, so that, that continues to haunt me. Um, had the wrong location posted. We went to the right location, just the wrong location posted on our schedule for the week. Um, so oops on Tuesday. Um, but all in all, still ended up, I mean, it was a slower than normal lunch there. Um, probably because not as many people knew we were there. Um, but yeah, one of our new subdivisions, uh, Bayberry Farms, uh, was another, Jesus, sorry, another really, really good night. Um, they continue to be a thousand dollar subdivision. Um, that's good. When, yeah, that, that those are good. I, yeah, subdivisions have been good for us this year and that kind of thing for the most part. Um, Wednesday was kind of ugh. um, lunch, lunch in Ionia was the weather was awful, it was super windy. Um, our first big issue that we've had with the predator, um, the wind was blowing in the uh, wrong direction. Oh. Yes, and blowing right into the exhaust, which kept triggering the uh, sensor. Yes, the carbon monoxide sensor. Um, so after we turned it uh, a little bit, it was much better. Did you put it uh, on your platform yet, or is it still on your truck? No, it's still on the truck. Where'd you have your generator? Huh? Where, where in the bed did you have your generator? Like towards the back, towards the cab? In the middle. Oh, it's, it's right in the middle. Yeah, put it all the way to the cab. No, I don't want it all the way up there. I understand, but I'm telling you that that's O2 or that CO2 sensor is so touchy. I, we usually just drop the tailgate on the truck. I get it. Even with that, it was so touchy. Oh, uh, we we haven't had a problem. But as long as we drop the tailgate, we haven't had a problem except for the one day, and that the wind was just blowing that direction. Gotcha. So, other than that, it's been fine. We haven't had a single issue with it. Um. So yeah, lunch was lunch was a little meh, which is unfortunate because it was a super, it was a really good lunch the first time we were there this year, um, and we had a really good dinner. Uh, all of our dinner locations this week were our top tier uh, spots. So um, yeah, we had solid dinners all week. Um, other than that, yeah, Wiseman was pretty good, a little bit slower. We started getting some rain and some, some thunderstorms. It was all week. I'm just really tired of the rain and the wind. Oh, um, the wind is what gets me. Me, dri- yeah, driving back on, I think it was, oh, it was Saturday. It was the first time I almost pulled off the highway and took back roads. Yeah. Because it was blowing so hard. Like, I couldn't stay in my lane. Yeah. Um, It was awful. Yeah, that was the most unsafe I felt driving, pulling the trailer, I think, ever. Um, but yeah, so if, yeah, Friday was okay. It was nothing spectacular. We did sell out, um, right there towards the end of the night, um, which breaks, broke our <laughs> non sellout streak that we had for going for almost two weeks now. Um, it had been a while. We did three of the one week and then we didn't have another one until this last Saturday. So, um, or Friday. But yeah, got that on Friday. And then Saturday we had the, um, uh, mountain bike time trials at Yankee Springs. Um, it's our third year we've done it. A uh, really good event, always. Uh, so they had, last year and this year, I think they were just over 600 participants um, in various heats and waves and things, um, which is fine, but what we really make money on is spectators. And for spectators, weather is a huge thing. Like, they don't cancel the thing because of rain, but no one's going to come watch if there's rain. Um, so as we were looking at the forecast <laughs> all week, we were supposed to have rain all day Friday, all day Saturday, all day Sunday. Um, when I had looked on Friday, Friday evening, it was rain through 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock. Mm-hmm. So it's like, okay, well, maybe. Maybe we'll still get a decent amount of spectators. When I woke up in the morning, the rain stops at 6.30 or something like that. Mm-hmm. And then it was a beautiful day. And it was absolutely gorgeous outside of the wind. Um, we were also told the night before that the other truck had bailed on us, had bailed on them. Um, and if there's any way we can bring some extra food. <laughs> sure. Okay. So off to GFS I go and grab some hot dogs. 
And uh, hey, meat's already on, you know. And there was like anything you can get out super quick that just so you guys don't run out of food. So no problem. Hot dogs it is. Um, and it's a good crowd for hot dogs. Um, I think last year they actually had a hot dog truck there. And that might have been the same one that bailed on them this year. But um, yeah, we sold 94 hot dogs. We did. We went to Kogel's. Sold them for four bucks a piece. And uh, we uh, we sold out at, we were supposed to be there till three. We sold out at like 2.30. Only because we ran out of hot dog buns. I still had like eight naked wieners left. <laughs> so. Hell, YouTube yeah. just kicked us up. <laughs> Not for wieners. <laughs> no, naked wieners. <laughs> it's not like I talked about wieners between buns and things. Oh, boy. What can you do? Um, so yeah, that was a, it was a good day. We did just over 2000 that day. Um, and then yeah, yesterday at trail point, it, it, we, we were super light on food. Um, we were expecting it to be a thunderstormy kind of day and it kind of was off and on. It was a pretty light crowd there. So uh, we cooked, we cooked properly for the day. Um, I think we had like a pound and a half, two pounds of pork left at the end of the day. And that was pretty much it. So. Um, it's it's nice that we're starting to figure out or start at least starting to project correctly um some of our locations. So That's good. our waste our waste has been way down this year. Um so that's that's really good. Um so uh now to my square fiasco in Snafu. Um so I had we have an invoice for a wedding. Um this guy's super super old school he gave me a check like two weeks ago for the deposit like showed up at our site handed me a check um and i cashed it and i just never actually applied it to the invoice yet for his deposit oh so hello go ahead okay definitely listening to this you're walking (laughs) so i went in on yeah i'm guessing tuesday maybe monday 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 or tuesday one of the days it's catching up on stuff um, went in to go apply the deposit and just didn't think and applied the entire amount to the invoice because it defaults as when you go in to make a payment, it was the full amount. So when I had clicked th- through, the invoice was paid fully, which then hit sales. I'm shutting my door. It's sold. Okay. So I had a $1,300 oh. invoice that was paid and was applied to our sales for the day. Yeah, wedding that's not until July. So, and the invoice wasn't final. He was still making some changes. It was just an initial invoice for him to be able to see where we're at. And we're, this is how we do it. So we start out with an initial headcount and initial menu, and then we can change it as we go if they need to. Okay. So, you following? I think I got what you're saying. Okay, keep going. So, now that I have realized that I, the invoice is now closed. Mm-hmm. Um, we can't make any changes to it and I'm kind of screwed. So I was like, okay, I'll just do a refund on the other amount. Or I'll, I'll do a refund on the invoice and then just start a new invoice and we'll start over. Okay? Make sense? Okay. I would correct the sales and I would have just the one invoice again and we would be good to go. All right? Good. Yeah. So I go in and do the refund from my computer. Just do it as a cash refund because it was just a check. No big deal. Nothing needs to be processed. Okay? Uh So it all goes through. And I look at my, later in the day, I look at my uh, sales report for the day, and there's no refund there. And the sales number stays the same. Okay? I know. Curious, isn't it? Now, so after further investigating, I'm going to actually pull up the day. Is that April? It's the 23rd. No, 24th. All right. So, why is that so high? Oh, hold on. Sorry. Please stand by. Okay, so with that invoice, it was twenty six hundred dollars and twenty 
$2,626.08 for the total for the day between the invoice and whatever. So I go down, no re- nothing on returns, nothing on discounts and comps. Net sales, $26.26.08. Okay? Okay. Yeah. If you scroll down further on the website, there is this spot that says refunds by amount. And that is where this refund went. Without an adjustment to net sales. Uh huh. I thought, well, that's bizarre. Why would you why would you put that below net sales? Why wouldn't it just go in as a regular refund? Right? That's I mean that's just weird. Don't you think? Well, I guess it depends on how you process the re and what screens did you process the refund? Because if you would have done it on your POS as a refund. Why does it matter? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, so I call Square. Oh. Thursday, Friday. Well, because I need support. I want to see if they can fix it. Mm-hmm. Or if there's something that went wrong, I need it fixed. Because your sales report for the IRS gets pulled off net sales. Mm-hmm. Which means I have an extra thirteen hundred dollars on there. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's not a huge tax amount, but it's not an amount I want to have to pay if I don't have to, right? You are absolutely right. Okay, so <clears throat> first of all, I don't know if you've called the Squares Tech Support. I've not, but I had to push about four thousand buttons. Oh yeah. Of various I questions. I don't doubt that whatsoever. That's for then sure. to get good morning, Bernie. Uh, I'm glad you're joining us for this story. I don't know if you are caught up on it so far, but buckle in. All right. Um, <laughs> it's going to so be a bumpy I, ride. I finally get transferred to. I know we need these jobs filled. Can you please have people that speak full English and not broken English? Preferably, if they're going to work from home, can we ensure that they have a proper working space that isn't in their kitchen or dinette while they're making dinner? Because all I could hear was kids and pots and pans. And every other word was broken English, three-quarter sentences. So after 15 minutes of me trying to explain what had happened for her to understand, I get put on hold. And every two seconds, it's, I'm sorry it's taking so long. I said, no problem, as long as we get it fixed. I don't have a problem. Take as long as you need. So, after a whole lot of re-explaining and then getting put back on hold, her coming back, asking me a question about something else regarding it, and then getting put back on hold, it comes back that it's because of the way that I processed the refund and that my computer isn't attached to cash management. I know I see you nodding. I mean, okay. I'll hold on. I did the payment through my laptop. Didn't have a problem adding that to my sales for the day. So if I can take a payment and have it go to sales, I should be able to do a refund from the same device and have it also be a refund. I almost asked for the person she was talking to. Can you just transfer me to that person? (laughs) I said, after, it was an hour and 10 minutes, I was on the phone. And then I hung up. After we had this exact same just conversation. Furious. I was absolutely furious when I got off the phone. She asked me if I would take a survey. And that's when I hung up, actually. That was the last word she said. (laughs) I don't understand. Cash management's fairly new in the grand scheme of Square. There was no cash management before. It's a it was a it's a new thing that was on came later in uh, the register. It was just a closed drawer, open drawer. Cash management's new in the last couple of years. 
I anyway. funded a deposit and it came out of my sales. No, deposit shouldn't because uh, it doesn't. <sighs> Deposits don't, unless you have it set up that way. I mean, you can do it that way, I think. But yeah, your so your invoice doesn't they hit don't. your sales numbers until it's completely paid. Yeah, okay. So yeah, all the deposits that I've collected so far haven't moved my sales numbers at all because it's not paid. Hmm. So yeah, that's where I'm at. I'm super annoyed. <laughs> so now I've got to try to figure out how I'm going to do his new in or his next. It, do I alter his next invoice so that I can get my sales numbers to actually match up to what they are. So almost like discount is new invoice. <laughs> I don't, I'm like, fuck it. I, I might just eat it and make believe that I have $1,300 after sale. Well, I think you, I think you eat it and move on. Fran says when speaking with customer service, preface your conversation with this phrase. Do not let the sound of my voice or the words I choose reflect personally on you. But I am annoyed. I was not annoyed, Fran, until an hour and nine minutes. I was as courteous and respectful as any human being. I, I love customer service people. They have a very tough job. I've been on IT tech support on the other side of it. I get it. And I am understanding and empathetic. But... At an hour and nine minutes, I was done. And that's why I just left the conversation, because I wasn't going to say anything that was nice after that. So, there. That was my Square debacle for the week. Um, other than that, I still love Square. I think they're great. <laughs> Our online ordering has been going really well. Bernie says, uh, Square customer service is brutal. I have fraud on my account at least three times a year, and they are useless. They hold your deposits to investigate, actively looking to switch. So, um, and I and I fully am aware that I made the mistake on how I handled the deposit, but it seems like it's a mistake that can be correct, should be able to be corrected. Um, and I just don't know if there was something lost in translation and then playing the telephone game with whoever she was talking to. Um, so I may try to call back and see if we can still work things out. Um, I probably am not going to be actively uh, looking to switch um, now that I've settled down a little bit, but um, this is just more annoying than really a detrimental thing. But yeah, so it's yeah super bizarre. <laughs> so yeah, under net sales, there's a, a total sales, uh, which then has the 1300 taken out of it, but also has taxes in it and tips added in it Ooh. and that number doesn't pull up anywhere in your reports so Ooh. yeah anyways so um yeah back to the week it was a, a good week and um this week is going to be a phenomenal week um so <laughs> i see that you, you have um, you have a busy etna week this week yeah so 700 people give or take uh, a quarter hundred um, i think 675 is the total number between the two days uh, the first one being 425 um, so i've had problems ordering chicken quarters and it usually takes a few days for them to get to like i have to do those orders a few days ahead of time yeah um, it sounds like those come from the warehouse on the other side of the state they don't come from the brighton. warehouse. yeah um i guess so, brighton has a really big warehouse <laughs> So knowing that, I ordered my chicken ahead of time so that I could have it in time for, for me to be able to separate all the quarters and go that far. So I have it set for pickup, seven cases of chicken quarters with backs um, ready to pick up on Sunday. So I roll in there yesterday, and I'm waiting, and I'm waiting, and two flatbed carts come out with 15 cases of chicken. I said, who's the other cart for? Because I only have, and the sheet that I have says seven. It says it right there. There's one they handed me, seven cases. She's, she's like, well, they all had your name on it, and the manager said they were for you. I said, no. Uh -uh. She's like, do you want me to get them? I said, yeah. You're telling me I need to take them. 
Yes, please go get him. So he's like, yeah, I, I don't know why it has so many. Do you think you can go through them? We can hold them here for you. I said, before May 6th in a week? No. <laughs> I said, the only reason I have this many is because I have two large events, and that's what they're being used for. I said, I don't even know that I have room for the seven cases in my fridge, which I do. And that's the only thing I have currently in that fridge, pretty much. Um, cool. Yeah, so we got all that taken care of. So he was going to try to send them back, but good luck. Um, yeah, that was a weird one. <laughs> so, yep, I've started. So, Josh, why did you buy chicken quarters, not just buy uh, legs and thighs? Because they don't so, care. What's that? Because they don't carry them. Well, that and its price. So, um, I have usually gotten thighs and legs separated at Costco. Um, Costco's chicken prices are horrendous, however. So, two ninety nine, I think, is what the last I saw there for those a pound. Um, chicken quarters are forty or fifty four cents, forty nine cents a pound, something like that. Some of them are in general vicinity. Um, so, uh, doing the math on all of that, I paid two hundred and eleven dollars for my seven cases of chicken. Um, which uh, at Costco, I would have paid just over $1,000 for the chicken I need. So a savings of $800. Um, and all I have to do is separate legs and thighs on the chicken quarters. So how are you, are you doing a buffet or no? Yeah. Yep. And they request. So if we're catering for 425 people, her request is that there be enough food that everybody can have both proteins. Are you um, counting so both proteins as one piece of chicken or two? Yes. So one. So each person can have a piece of chicken. Otherwise, I'd just leave them as quarters if that was the case. So, yeah. So everybody gets a piece of chicken and a serving of pork. And that allows for the people that just take, you know, two servings of pork or two. I mean, we've had people take like six chicken thighs or legs <laughs> off the buffet. And then there's still plenty of people that don't take any. And there's usually a ton of food left over. But they don't want to run out. These are, for the most part, big eaters at the events. Um, lots of plumbers and public works people and that kind of sort. So um, quarter, quarter pound pork sort serving or third yeah, that's pound? That's what we figure. Yeah. So we'll have 100 pounds of pork and then 400 and whatever pieces of chicken. And then a shit ton of mac and cheese, mashed potatoes, and coleslaw. Um, yeah. 400 is a lot. Um, Especially with that amount of food in the menu and hot food at that. So um, that'll be our hardest one. The rest of them are all pretty uh, easy, 200, 250 or less. So um, yep, we'll get through that one. And yeah, that's our Wednesday, Thursday. So, but for I think $14,000 for the two days. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's a good 22 bucks ahead. It's a good week. It's a good week. <laughs> And then we're still doing roadside. So we have a, we have an elementary event on Friday evening. We're hoping, hoping the forecast holds out for us uh, right now. It looks like rain. A lot of hot dogs that day. Yeah. Yeah. That was the first time we did hot dogs was at that event last year and they requested it. Um, so we're the only entree truck. So they do an entree truck and then a, a ice cream or donut truck. So, um, yep. Two for eight ketchup, mustard, onion. Kids meal with yeah. mac and cheese for another five. Yeah. Could. Could do. That's what I do is a hot dog and mac and cheese for eight bucks. Hmm. Except I always forget to bring the toppings. <laughs> anyway. Uh, Fran says, always document names, dates, and times. Also ask if you can record the conversation to ensure you didn't miss anything. Yeah, you know. Or, Fran, they can just fix my freaking problem. Jeez. Um, moving on. I don't want to talk about it anymore. What time is it? 9.45? Okay. You know how hard it is to cook 400 servings of pork? 100 pounds of cooked pork is a lot. Yeah. 200 pounds of raw, so you're at, what, three cases? Two and a half cases? Mm -hmm. We call it three, right? 200 pounds. 100, yeah. Well, you're a little less than 200. 
Um, okay. So I, I was I 60%. So we, our average right now has been about 60 oh, from, I've, from what we've been measuring and stuff. So I haven't weighed it. So I don't remember. I don't know. It's better than half. Okay. Um, so you're so talking about 60. You're talking 280 pound cases or three, two and a half, 70 pound cases. Yeah. So for every 100 pounds of raw, we're getting 240 servings. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, tomorrow night I will be up all night um, rotating chicken on and off the smoker just like I had to do when we had that 600. That, that, yeah. So you had mentioned to me 